I'm Andrew Copen of 360 for 30. When the Cascadia Fault ruptures, it'll cause a catastrophic 9.2 magnitude earthquake, which will cause massive destruction from Vancouver, British Columbia, all the way down to Northern California. It'll be the worst natural disaster to have ever hit the United States. It's expected to cause over 10,000 deaths, 30,000 serious injuries, and trillions of dollars worth of damage. It will be a defining moment in the United States' history. Simply put, this one earthquake will devastate the Pacific Northwest and seriously impact the United States' economy for many years. With numbers this large, it's easy to go numb. So let's make this personal and local. What will the devastation be like where I'm at today, which is downtown Redmond? What will happen to Redmond in the first few minutes, days, weeks, and months after the Cascadia fault ruptures? To begin with, let's examine Redmond as it stands right now. Redmond is located east of Seattle and just north of Lake Sammamish. It is a city of approximately 68,000 residents where more than 50% of the jobs are directly tied to one employer, which is Microsoft. Since at least 2005, Redmond has known about a seismic risk and liquefaction zone which is located beneath its downtown area. In spite of this knowledge, Redmond it has and is actively and significantly increasing the density of this area by building and continuing to build high-density multi-story apartment complexes and hotels. This downtown area is also holds key medical facilities. Redmond City Hall, Redmond Fire Department Headquarters, its emergency services building, and most of Redmond's key grocery and hardware stores. So now that we have the basics of Redmond, what will happen when the Cascadia fault ruptures? When the fault ruptures, the earth will slip by 60 feet at roughly 2 miles per second, unzipping the sea floor along the rupture zone for more than 600 miles. When this happens, Redmond will be convulsing for longer than 5 minutes. Bridges interconnecting Redmond's neighborhood and Redmond to the region will fall. The wet soil of downtown Redmond, as shown in the seismic hazard map, will liquefy. The soil that was once holding up high-density apartments, hotels, the emergency services building, a hospital, city hall, and even Redmond Fire Department headquarters in downtown Redmond will liquefy. Many of these buildings, as the soil liquefies, will topple or simply sink. Brick and masonry buildings will shatter. Redmond City Center will be buried beneath glass shards, rubble, and sand. Everything underground, water mains, natural gas pipes, will be crushed. Numerous landslides will occur in and around Redmond, further isolating individual communities of Redmond. Because Redmond has chosen to place most of its key facilities in the most seismically vulnerable area, by the time the earth stops shaking, Redmond will no longer have a working fire or the police department. No working city hall. Tens of thousands of people will be homeless. Its main hardware and grocery stores destroyed. And if any medical facilities are still standing, they will be severely damaged. Just a few minutes after the earthquake finally stops, a second hammer blow will strike. Tsunami waves of up to 50 feet high will rip the face of the coastal region clean off the map, pulverizing everything and killing everyone in its path. Luckily for Redmond, Redmond is far enough inland to be spared the direct effects of this devastation. However, due to the proximity and physical layout of Lake Sammamish, Downtown Redmond can expect waves of floodwaters up to 3 to 5 feet from the sloshing of Lake Sammamish. Over the next few hours, days, weeks, and months, the region will be hit with other major earthquakes, aftershocks, which will exceed 7.0. These aftershocks will be major quakes in and of themselves and will again cause the ground to liquefy 
causing weakened buildings and other infrastructure that survived the initial earthquake to collapse and fail. Right after the earthquake, Redmond City itself will be completely isolated. No roads to it will be passable. It will be left without power, without communication, no emergency services, and no government. Redmond, for all intents and purposes, has now ceased to exist. Depending on the time of day, Redmond can expect several hundred dead with several thousand people severely injured and trapped beneath destroyed buildings, some of which will be on fire. Depending on the season, these building fires may spread to the forest canopy. If the forest canopy does catch on fire, with no fire department to stop it and no way to evacuate, the loss of life in vulnerable communities like Education Hill will be in the thousands. Going forward, I'm going to assume the best case scenario. I'm going to assume that no fire strikes Redmond's forest canopy. Over the next two to three days, Redmond will be in the acute disaster phase. Because of the scope and range of the disaster, no outside help will have arrived anywhere in the disaster zone, let alone Redmond. Even though Redmond has no power, communication, or emergency services, and even though many people will panic when the earth starts to shake again due to aftershocks, we can expect neighbors to be helping neighbors during this time, and generally people will be cooperating with one another. If you are trapped or injured, you will be getting assistance from neighbors and strangers. You can expect many people to be heroically helping one another during this time. What you can't be expecting is help from professional emergency services as they will be trapped and isolated themselves. While during the first two to three days of the acute disaster phase, you can expect people to be cooperating and working together. However, as we move into the chronic disaster phase, which will last probably three to four weeks, people will become less and less cooperative. People will quickly realize that there are no stores to get supplies and that their own supplies and adrenaline will run out. Exhausted, tired, hungry, people will realize that they will need to secure food, water, and shelter for themselves. The realization that there will be no outside assistance for a long time will rapidly sink in. And as far as sanitation goes, it will be non-existent. And this will rapidly contaminate and poison any water sources. Medical treatment at best will be makeshift. Generators that were initially set up after the quake will start failing due to no gas being available. Because of no law enforcement, because people will be having withdrawal symptoms from both legal and illegal drugs, because they're just bad people who just need and want an opportunity to hurt people, violent crime will become endemic in the city. During this time, Redmond's largest employer, Microsoft, will start to enact their emergency business plans and within a few weeks after the quake, will start shifting their businesses out of Redmond. This shift will most likely be permanent. Because FEMA's first priority will be major cities hit by the disaster, and since Redmond is not a major city, Redmond will not receive any support or assistance from the federal or state governments for weeks or even months after the quake. Slowly, as help starts trickling into Redmond, Redmond will begin its recovery phase, and this phase will last between three and eight weeks. While law and order will be put in place again, this phase will be marked by extreme frustration for the residents. Supplies of both food and water and medicine will become available, but access to them will mean long waiting times in long lines with lots of people. While you will still be living in harsh conditions, while the resources and infrastructure is slowly being restored, accessing government or charity resources will entail you filling in, completing, and waiting on paperwork to be processed. After the recovery phase will come the restoration phase. For cities close to Redmond, like Bellevue, Monroe, Duval, after several years of economic downturn and upheaval due to the earthquake, because of their geographic location and the diversity of businesses in their community, they will have a renaissance and become powerhouses of the region. For Redmond, since it has placed most of its key infrastructure in seismic hazardous areas, combined with a high proportion of its residents being renters and for it being a company town with the majority of jobs coming from just one company, 
when that one company, which is Microsoft, leaves, there will be little funds available for Redmond to rebuild. Redmond, unfortunately, will most likely become like Christchurch, New Zealand, which was hit with a catastrophic quake in 2011. All of downtown will be shut down for many years. Parts of the city will be abandoned, and the areas prone to liquefaction will be returned to green space. In reality, poor city planning and the extensive amount of vulnerable physical infrastructure in Redmond isn't Redmond's biggest weakness. The real weakness is in the lack of individual preparedness, because right now, only a tiny percentage of families will be able to take care of themselves for as long as necessary to handle this disaster. It is absolutely impossible for Redmond, or for that matter, any city, to stockpile enough food and medicines to properly feed and take care of its residents during this type of a disaster. It will be up to individual people to take care of themselves and their neighbors until FEMA arrives. And FEMA won't be on the scene in a day or perhaps even a week and perhaps not even a month after the Cascadia Fault ruptures. Yet history has shown that the higher percentage of people who are prepared to handle emergencies translates directly on how resilient a community is to a disaster. And the more resilient a community is, the better it can survive and then thrive after disaster. A good example of this is Greensboro, Kansas, a small town of only 1,500. It was completely destroyed in 2007 by an F5 tornado, yet today it is more than restored and has become a leader in LEED certified buildings. Basically, a little town in the middle of Kansas by being resilient, has become a town that is far more technologically advanced than Redmond is, and Redmond is the home of Microsoft. Even though Redmond is particularly vulnerable to catastrophic damage and long-term effects of earthquakes, if residents come together and embrace a culture of community and preparedness, Redmond can survive and then thrive after the Cascadia Fault ruptures, in spite of poor planning and city design. This is why I want Redmond residents to know the importance of being prepared. The more we are prepared, the less we will be affected and the greater chance Redmond will be a city that survives the coming Cascadia Fault Rupture. If you found this video interesting, please like, share and subscribe so that you can be alerted when new content is added to this channel. I'm Andrew Copen of 360 for 30. It's time for each of us to be prepared.